For the last two months, in August and September of 2023, the groups and the newsletters have been focused on Catholic Lecture 190, which is feeling, uh, feeling all your feelings, experiencing all your feelings. And I made one short video a while back for August. I'm making another now because we've just completed the process. And I always find that the process and the comments made during the actual online meetings educate me more deeply about the lecture. They help me understand it better. They help me to be able to discuss it more succinctly, more easily, because it's easier for me to see what points are clear, fairly clear immediately, versus what takes a little bit of digging or a little bit of, of taking things apart to examine. One of the things that I liked about 190 uh, was that it did not necessarily require uh, a commitment to pathwork cosmology, a commitment to a spiritual path. It's more useful generically, universally. Um, the guide speaks about how feeling all your feelings is just plain healthy, that not allowing the energy within you to move freely creates a, a toxicity. It, it's like you, you don't purge and the stuff stacks up and it stagnates. Now, it's very common. It's very easy to misinterpret that suggestion as suggesting that we need to act them out or to behave with some level of disinhibition where I, if I feel it, I say it. Acting it out is not the same as experiencing your own feelings. So this lecture is about you learning what goes on in you about you. Now, once you're better able to do that, it is my experience, and I believe it is true, that you can see feelings in other people more easily. You notice the subtleties, you notice the cover-ups, you notice the, the pullbacks, the contractions. Uh, you notice more because you know more. So like anything, if you examine it and you understand it, then you are able to observe it in other aspects more easily. Um, so a lot of experiencing your own feelings is about becoming aware of what's going on in you. Now, feelings are touchy-feely and they're subjective and they're hard to talk about. So I like to bring in other examples. And the example that I thought of was that uh, about a year and a half ago, I decided to teach uh, a lecture on commitment. Uh, main commitment lecture is 196, but I decided to teach one of the pieces of additional material, which is called additional material number six, on committing to the process described in Pathwork and to the ideals of Pathwork. Uh, not required, but I thought it should be introduced and talked about. And when I decided to introduce the topic, what I do is I try to find a place in me that needs this lecture. In other words, I want to, to walk it, to live it, in order to truly understand it and be able to present it well. And so I looked around my life and lo and behold, my weight has always been a problem and it had ballooned. Uh, so what can you do if you're going to teach commitment? You need to commit. So two months before I started to teach the lecture, I began to commit. Now, the reason I'm mentioning it here is, yes, I lost 40 pounds, which is always nice when you're older. But when people say, how did you do it? I found myself saying things like diet and exercise, which has truth to it except that wasn't what actually helped me. What actually made the difference is that I found out how much I had lied to myself. I ate a healthy diet. Uh, I didn't eat processed foods. I didn't eat 
it was a very, very healthy diet, but there was too much of it. I would chronically underestimate how much I was eating. And I also was not as aware as I could have been about the caloric uh, intake. So if I had a bowl of nuts in front of me, I might eat a cup of nuts. Uh, later, I found out that's a thousand calories. That's that's a day's worth of calories for a woman my size or half a, half a day's worth of calories. Um, so instead of saying diet and exercise, which was the, that was the mechanical method of helping me re, uh, shift my habits and lifestyle, what really made the difference was re-educating myself. It wasn't that I wasn't educated. I understood calories. I, I understood the basics. I had to re-educate myself about how I was using this information. I needed to realize that I had chosen to turn my head away. I had chosen not to compute what I was eating. I had chosen to live in fantasy to some extent. Now, you can do that and get away with it, or you, you, you do it and you don't get away with it. I was, I'm one of the people, my build, my metabolism, I didn't get away with it. Uh, so that's how I feel about this lecture. This lecture is about getting honest with yourself, about digging and figuring out what is going on, what's this tightness, what's this contraction, what's this not wanting to breathe, what is all this about? And it's not as easy to be scientific about it as it is with how many calories are in a quarter cup of nuts? How many calories are in a slice of bread? Tablespoon of peanut butter. Those are easy by comparison. Working with your feelings is a highly subjective process. And the only person who truly knows the answer is you. What the groups demonstrated to me, what they validated to me, was that we do suspect. We do suspect that we're a little bit angry, but we don't understand the anger. And we don't want to make a mistake and blame the wrong person, so we just hold on to it. And so now I'm going to cycle back through my uh, the topics I've brought up. It's not healthy to hold on to it. It doesn't go away. It uh, Holding on to it is not awareness so that you're managing it, but you're not understanding what you're actually managing. You may be mislabeling it, maybe anger, it could be, you don't even know what it is. So socially, we have a list of emotions that are not acceptable. Anger is not acceptable. Uh, a certain level of grief is not acceptable. Um, it is a long list. Well, they're not acceptable because they're hard to manage. But that's, it's like that gives us a get out of jail free card to not manage them, to not exhibit them, to not admit we even have them. So this process was like inviting all the, the people that I work with to go through and excavate all kinds of feelings. And a common expression about uh, three quarters of the way through this process, which was eight weeks, um, but a common uh, uh, people expressed, we could stay on this lecture for six months. Yes, we can. And what I tease about is it does get boring after a while. We'd like something else. Once again, let's bring in diet and exercise. We like a little variety and we like some change and we appreciate different textures and uh, it, it, it's not that you can't survive on bread and water. You can survive. The question becomes, will you enjoy it? Will it motivate you? Will it keep you enthusiastic and joyful? Or will it allow you to slowly get sick and tired so that you back off? Uh, so a lecture can be wonderful for eight weeks and it, you can ruminate on it. You can, you can pick up threads of it. 
for years to come. Uh, one of my experiences early on in Pathwork was I found the lecture on personality types, Pathwork Lecture 43. And how can you explain it? I fell in love. I was entranced by it. It, uh, it and the associated dozen lectures that go with it um, explained to me why people saw things differently. It was as if somebody gave me the manual for why there are so many different viewpoints and why people don't get along and why I don't fit with this conversation. Or uh, It occupied me for years. Now, the class I was in, they, they went on. They went, you know, a, a, not a dozen, but a half dozen lectures per module. And they were trooping through uh, a lot of different subjects, which I also I did my homework. I followed through. But my point is that I kept working on that personally. I kept uh, going deeper and deeper into that. I must have spent easily four or five years with that in my mind someplace, um, entranced by the idea and beginning to use it in more deep and wonderful ways to help my understanding of other people and of myself. And that's how I feel this lecture can be rewarding. You don't have to read the lecture once a week. Um, but the idea of it, uh, sometimes I tease people that the title alone, just, just write the title alone on a slip of paper and keep it as a reminder, because it says it in the title, Experiencing All Feelings. Um, and the mention of, of laziness is, is a part of that. It, it can be lazy to not find out what's going on. Just like it can be lazy not to notice how much food you're eating, or it can be lazy to, to not explore your options and to say, I don't have any. So it's a way of, an, it's, uh, the joy of awareness is a way of inviting you to consider looking at this lecture. That yes, it's disappointing to find out that we weren't who we thought we were, or we weren't as advanced as we thought we were. Um, I actually like those moments in my life uh, because it tells me that there's a great deal of room to grow in that area. Um, so there's a twinge of disappointment, uh, even anger or frustration. And then slowly the joy comes. Okay, now that we know an area where I'm not particularly well developed, now I can choose as to whether to develop that area or not. Uh, so that's my take on the end of Patrick Lecture 190, Experiencing All Feelings. Um, hope you take a look at it. It can be downloaded on pathwork.org. Uh, and the study guide is on my web website, janrigsby.org. Thanks for listening and take care.